Well, I want to greet you all again and say it's a joy and a privilege to be able to talk to you, particularly because if you're following this series of my messages, and you should do, um, I'm now into Ephesians chapter 3. And if I can just repeat this, uh, that uh, my father always used to say that Ephesians was the most spiritual of all the books in the Bible. And certainly, although I've previously concentrated more on the first part of Ephesians, the further I get into it, the more revealing it is. And uh, possibly now, uh, in chapter 3, um, this uh, explains or reveals things that I've never heard anybody preach on before. So, in this, Paul begins to speak, and he says, Paul, an apostle, uh, well, he says, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. And he's explaining that he realizes from the beginning that his calling and his ministry as a Jew is to the Gentiles. So a lot of what he's talking about is particularly of revelation to us. And um, he goes on to say, and in verse 3, he's talking about, um, uh, well, in verse 2, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me towards you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Now, he's talking about mysteries which God has revealed to him in order that he can reveal them to us. Now, I want you to get this in its context. Paul here is not speaking to the Jew. He's speaking to the Gentile. And the revelation that he has is to us as Gentiles. So we come to down and he, he goes on uh, the mystery, which he's written about previously a little, uh, that when you read you may understand. And this mystery in verse 5, which in other ages was not made known to us, the sons of men, that's Jew and Gentile. And remember that bit, not revealed to us, the sons of men, that includes Jew and Gentile. As now it is revealed unto the holy apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. Now, we're quite familiar with the revelation in verse 6 which is that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and partakers and part of the same body and partakers of the same promises in Christ through the gospel. Gentiles, fellow heirs with the Jews, the same body as the Jews, and partakers with the Jews of the promises in Christ which are revealed through the gospel. And this is what the gospel is about, the good news. But now, going on, he says, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. That is, uh, that the gift that made him the minister, the gift was given from God through the Holy Spirit to him, and he says, I'm less than the least of all saints. Why does he say that? The reason he's less than the least, that is the very lowest, is because as a very legalistic Pharisee, Paul was one of the greatest persecutors of the early Christians. A very orthodox, very strict uh, Pharisee of the Pharisees, so much so that he was party to the stoning of Stephen. And not only Stephen, but his whole job from the Orthodox Jews, his whole job was to find out the Christians 
and persecute them and imprison them and torture them and put them in prison. So you understand when he's referring to himself at the least of the least, it's because his whole job was as an Orthodox Jew, a Pharisee, was to persecute the church and the Christians. So now after his conversion, he has to accept that because of his background, he ha he's just the least and the very lowest. Now then he goes on. He says that this grace is given to me through the Holy Spirit, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now, the whole emphasis here is in verse 6, that it's he's made, God has made, Jew and Gentile, one body, breaking down the wall of petition. And so much emphasis is put on this. And in all the preaching that I hear connected with this, the whole emphasis is only on the miracle of breaking down the barrier between Jew and Gentile and making them one. But that is where I suddenly realized that overshadows the real truth which I believe God is revealing to me through the Holy Spirit and he's revealing to me only today as I read this and study which I now want to share to you. You see, what you have to do is you have to see in verse 9 now and going on to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning, beginning of the world has been hidden in God who created all things by Christ. Now verse 10 in is to me an even greater revelation than anything we've seen up till now. Because what he's saying in verse 10 is to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So now suddenly we have appearing into this a totally separate body. At this moment, he's not just talking to the Jew. He's not just talking to the Gentile. He's talking to the church. And what is the church? The church is the new dispensation that Paul refers to. The new dispensation that's now revealed in the New Testament. That the church is a totally different experience. It is two things. It is firstly the body of Christ. And secondly, it is the unity between Jew and Gentile. So the church exists or is created in order to form a totally different entity. Whereas until now, this is what Paul is trying to explain. Until now, you had the Jew uh, and the Jewish people, of course, inherited all the grace, the wisdom of God, had the relationship with God, had the priests, had the temple, had the approach to God through the priests, and so on. And the whole of the relationship with God was through the Jewish people and through the priesthood. But now, something totally different. In the New Testament, in Christ, God has created a whole new image. This image is the church, which when Jew and Gentile are united, become the body of Christ on earth. Now, to me, um, I think so often... Uh, this we lose sight of this because also when you begin to to read on and you see what happens is this in verse 11 this is according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus so in other words the eternal purpose means right from the beginning God knew ultimately 
that the Jews alone would not fulfill the whole work and mission here that it had to come through a newly created body through the death of Christ, the, the, the body of Christ, the church. Mm -hmm.